Hola, chicas. Otro día, otro drag. Welcome to yet another Drag Race Review Podcast. I'm your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Y yo soy la burrita burrona. Nice to meet you. And this is the J Word, your home for all things Drag Race Mexico. Burrita, mira, ¿cómo estás? Hello, nice to meet you. Mira, mi inglés, no, mi inglés está muy del put. No está a mi nivel, no está muy de mi nivel. Entonces, I'm going to try. That's my okay, best. I speak, I speak I'm, all languages, girl. Oh, I know, girl. I'm going to try my best, but I am no Marta de Baile, okay? Do you want some bread? Uh, no, thank you. Are you sure it's a good way to remember me? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, thank you. I'm afraid okay. I'm going to hell, okay? Okay, heathen. Well, burrita, amiga. Yes. I have a question for you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. My question for you is, well, no, do you want to ask me a question first? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> That's my question for you. Don't you want to ask me a question step, first? Don't step on my, <laughs> do not. Bitch, I ain't stepping on your heeled hoof. This is I ain't stepping on your heeled hoof. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Go ahead. Stop. Welcome. Stop or, you know what? Stop it or I'm going to tell my mom to ride you all the way to Bethlehem. Okay. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> okay. So, welcome to El Eslache. Yeah. So, Jesus Christ. Galavaro is so shady. Uh, when... She reads you. You don't need an umbrella to protect yourself. You need a blank. Hmm. Oh, wait, hang on. Um. You know what? Can I call my dad real quick? He knows everything. So, like, give me a second. Oh, no, I think he's busy. I think he's um he's busy ignoring a school shooting. Um. Okay, so I wrote, um, because you need a lot of protection here, right? If God is going to throw you some shade, um, I wrote that what you need instead of an umbrella is... Um, La Rosa de Guadalupe, okay, because she can protect you from anything. <laughs> yes, come on, Lupita. <laughs> All right, ask me. Ask okay, me. okay. So my question for you is, Margaret's eyebrows are so crazy. If she can't find her eyebrow pencil, she just draws them on with. Uh, well, okay, so I know Margaret. I know Margaret from back in the day. Okay, Ronald oh. Chismes. Ronda de Jesus. I'm going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, so. Se cayó. Se cayó. Everything on my bookshelf just fell down. Anyway, so. Ronda de Jesus. So I know Margaret back in the day. And um, she used to. Um, I don't know. So. You know what? I'm bored. Mm -hmm. I'm bored. Ya me aburrí. A mí me gusta. I like to talk shit about people. I like to, you know, I like to party. I like to laugh. I don't I don't like to do this snatch game and these questions. Like, no, no, no. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna leave. Okay. Well, she's yeah. too good for it. All right. Well, um, that's our little mini snatch game. <laughs> Let me tell you why I dress up. <laughs> I have always said. <laughs> Okay, let me take, let me take this. Take it let off, take it off. <laughs> All right. And we're okay. back. <laughs> so the reason I'm dressed up like this is because I've always said that if um, I had to go on Snatch Game, my two options would be Jesus Christ and Megan McCain. Because yes. either way, I get to just talk about my famous dad <laughs> and be the ultimate Nepo baby. The, um, the school shooting line, come on, that's that's you're on the top this week. <laughs> thank you. Um, well, so I better get out of this because um, I know that some people um, can be very touchy about a fictional character. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I mean, I stole that joke from Jackie B, but it's still amazing. <laughs> yeah. I just want to mention um, that I wore this when I was 18. This one, no, not the head. This when I was 18 and I played Edna at a musical concert. Uh, I played Edna mm -hmm. from Hairspray, yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about why you dressed up as burrita or should we cut? 
Uh, no, we can talk. We can talk about that. We we can just mention real quick that it's a very funny character with a lot of catchphrases. Every single one of the catchphrases just com I completely blanked. Now I know <laughs> how Dutch game works. <laughs> All the, the thought that went through my head when you asked me the question was, I didn't prepare anything. <laughs> Oh, I see, I just completely blank. I, I was like, I have to have an answer for anything. <laughs> yes. Uh, so anyway, so I just, I just, you know, I went to the catchphrases and I went to the, you know, like, ya me voy. yeah, ya me voy. Ya me voy. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, I, I just wanted to do something that I didn't have to actually get into <laughs> because imagine doing the episode in full makeup. <laughs> it couldn't be. Yeah. Me. Um, I happen to so, have a I happen to have a wig yes, that kind of exactly. like no know. it that's how we we planned it. We said like okay, let's do some homemade snatch game that we can, you know, something that we can pull together real fast. And I made a piñata from scratch. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here, here it is, like just to, to uh, the whole thing. That's amazing. Keep it forever. And if you don't, I then just send it I to just me. love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it for next pride. <laughs> Do it! Oh my gosh, yes. that's an amazing idea. So this is a this oh, is a, a, a bottle of water, you know, one of those big bottles of water, and everything yeah. else is like a powerful. like a big like a big one. Yes, like a big one. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do some housekeeping. The first thing I want to mention is that nuestra mexicana, nuestra hermana mexicana, or chicana, I don't know, however she identifies, adore Delano. Um, posted a video talking he about- He identifies as a Libra. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, for sure. Um, with something rising, I don't know. Um, some moon, some whatever. Um, but she has posted a video talking about how, she, well, she came out as trans and let everybody know that she's transitioning. Um, and so I just wanted to congratulate her and say, yay. And um, that I've met her a couple of times and she was super sweet and she was wonderful. And she called me a sex bucket. So, okay. A whole bucket. <clears throat> um, a whole bucket, not just a drop. Um, <laughs> so the second thing I want to mention is, is explaining my outfit for the second time today. Um, I'm wearing a shirt uh, that I did the artwork for. It's uh, for the drag queen Mira Mangle, who has a show on YouTube with her friend Scarlett Cyanide. I've mentioned her before. <clears throat> but um, it's a great drag themed and drag race themed like youtube chat show so it's like great i watch it every morning with like my coffee right um but i did this shirt for her and i just wanted to mention um that you should check out her stuff we're going to show a graphic later that she made um because it's somewhat helpful and um you can get the shirt i think at like dragqueenmerch.com so check her out and support her um the next thing that i want to mention has to do with a little correction from last week where you felt the need to correct me, incorrect. but I wasn't wrong, yes. was I? Do you want to tell oh, us what happened? <laughs> hang on, okay. hang on, hang on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes. <laughs> so what happened? What, what happened was um, that uh, that you mentioned a bunch of tattoos from the queens on the show. And I went through the episode looking for photos or moments where you could see the tattoos. And uh, and so I looked for galas, like, you know, all over the, the mini challenge and, and beyond. I even went to the previous episode to the Rusical because she was wearing a, bat a bathing suit. And I was looking for the tattoos. And the, the closest I could come up with was one on her leg that had a hand. It wasn't the creation hands, now I know. But it looked, like holding... it looked like a hand. It, it's uh, holding uh, puppet strings. And so... Of like a bird, I think, or something. Yes, exactly. So I was like, oh, that's a hand. That must be it. I kind of watch it, really, but I, I bet that that's it. And so I put it, and then I heard that you were saying, like, oh, it's in her arm. And I was like, no, it's in her leg, clearly, duh. And so I corrected you on the episode, like, no, le leg. Uh, but apparently, I missed the actual tattoo on her arm. So we're going to put it right here. <laughs> yes. It's when Valentina's counting down during the mini challenge. So yeah. I love that she forgets uh, number six. <laughs> yeah, she goes that's like, funny. seven. Um, well, siete. Uh, and, and then somebody else goes like, say. Somebody yells it. Like, oh, yeah, say. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair, they all have a lot of tattoos. So. Yeah. Um, 
Well, if you want to scour the episodes like Chucho did, looking for a very specific detail, and you don't have a subscription to WoW Presents Plus, then we have a little gift for you. You can now use the code MEXICO for 20% off of your first month of WoW Presents Plus. So go get yourself an account. Um, That brings us to the top of this new episode. So let's get into it. Um, the queens enter the workroom in this episode and they read Serena Morena's mirror message. It says, Chicas, las quiero mucho te a vibrar la puchita, Serena Morena. Um, it that's basically a, a throwback to her entrance line, which was like, you know, my pussy is vibrating. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, in the confessional, Gala throws her some shade that Serena is not a good drag queen, but she's a good person. <laughs> it's so messed up. It is, yeah, to me, exactly. to me, it is seriously, hands down, one of the shadiest things ever said on Drag Race because it's like, so usually you go like, oh, you know, you, you read somebody for her drag or whatever, but to actually say like, oh, you're not a good drag queen, but you're a lovely person. That's like super shady, you know? It reminds yeah. me of, of Candy Muse when she's losting after Joey J in one of the first episodes of the season. And she just goes like, well... She can retire from drag and I can support us both and we can like be married. And I'm like, girl, you're basically saying like she's not a good enough drag queen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, it's funny, um, but very shady. Yeah. Um, everyone is starting to, I think, feel the pressure in this episode. And there are several queens who all mention it in this opening, like um Christian Margaret Gala and Matraca all mention it. Um that sort of, I mean, because I think, you know, now we're getting further on in the competition, so now they're starting to feel the pressure. Um, it's, guess what kind of day in the workroom? A new one. <laughs> A new one. <laughs> Imagine that. And the queens enter with tra, 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 matraca, ta, ta, ma, ma, ma. I can't. <laughs> um, they obviously love it. Um, and we have a top seven. Um, they decide to take an inventory of their wins and like of their progress so thanks to mirror mingle we have this little graph and it's very helpful it tells us that the point we're at in this competition i thought it was good to show this and like sort of take inventory since i think we're about halfway through the season maybe um so this graph tells us that christian as of as of the beginning of this episode christian uh, i never i never know if i'm talking english i'm just gonna say christian but it feels weird so sometimes i'll be like christian has two wins Regina has one win, Gala has one win, Matraca has one win, Argenis has one win. This is surprising. Margaret has zero wins, and Lady Kero has zero wins. So, that's where we're at. Out of those, like, I feel like, yeah, I mean, at this point, before we get into the actual episode, like, it, it seem, everything seems fair, except that I feel like Regina should have two and Christian should have won because of the Rusical. That is, I feel like that is the yeah. only, the only really controversial win that we have had so far. Everything else has seemed, you know, very fair. So, so yeah. Yeah. Well, that brings us to that mini reto and Lolita enters in what I think is a super cute look. I think she looks really cute in this like yellow kind of like sash thing. So the tea about that look is that she borrowed it from Christian Chavez and that it is kind of like a male, well, not a male, but like a more a male presenting version of the look that she will later wear on the runway. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was gonna mention that. I really like that. I wasn't that. sure if that's, what, that's great. Um, the big surprise here in this mini reto is um, Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, message from Norvina, who yeah. I, I guess her name is actually Claudia Soare and she's Romanian. <clears throat> but I had no idea that I don't know if she speaks Spanish or if she like learned this video message or what, but she sounds good. She did great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she, did, she gave um, us uh, she gave us some Ariana Grande realness, some uh, chica, tu necesitas datos ilimitados. Remember that? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. What are you? Yeah. I was genuinely surprised because I thought that it was a great touch and uh, and it shows that that it wasn't just like, a, like oh, I got to record this for this franchise, whatever. But like she actually, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, like they are 
uh, sponsoring the show. So, mm -hmm. so she cares about like her product, you know? So yeah, she did yeah. great. <clears throat> um, well, the reason she's there is because they have to put um, Katrina makeup on without a mirror and they have three minutes to do it. Um, and one thing that I really liked about this challenge, which I've never seen, I think, on Drag Race, is that usually when they don't let them use a mirror to put on makeup in a quick whatever, you, we just see them doing it and the mirrors are covered up. But in this one, they set them behind these like lit up silhouetted like screens that show them in silhouette. And yeah. I thought that was really cool. It looked really neat. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something about about um, Katrina that you want to mention. Yeah, so we we Ooh. love the Katrinas. We know them very well, you and I. But maybe some people out there don't don't know them. Uh, so with Dia de los Muertos, with Day of the Dead, uh, there's obviously this tradition of like this the the candy skulls and the skulls everywhere and the fl the flowers, the cepasuchil, everything. Uh, but there's also a more recent ish kind of like tradition recent I, I say recent because it's from the 1900s or the late 1800s so that's you know recent <laughs> uh but from uh, jose guadalupe posada who is uh he was an illustrator an artist uh in mexico uh and he did these characters these katrinas so katrin is just a, like an old-timey word for for like a fancy gentleman you know like somebody mm -hmm. who's like dressed up and whatever and so katrina is just like, like on the like on the um he's one of the cards on the, the, mm -hmm. the uh -huh. and so uh so the the uh, uh, katrina is just the female version of that and so the first, so like a lady like a fancy yes, lady exactly and so the 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 first depictions of of uh these skulls you know for like uh the, the newspapers and everything they were basically making fun of like the high society Lady Quero in this episode gives us another Milanesa empanizada. And I have, do you know what this is yet? Because they say okay, it like so, three or four times in this episode. Yes. So I still, I, I don't know what the voice is about. Like, I, I don't know if the voice is just like a standard lady, Mexican lady voice, you know, like just talking like this. Um, because it sounds like snagglepuss, like Mexican snagglepuss. <laughs> but, uh, but I feel because of how they use it in this episode, that Milanesa empanizada is just like, you know, a bunch of makeup on your face like you know that that your makeup looks like uh you know kind of shitty kind so of that's what i was gonna say is it like is it like a form of like caked on yes how we say caked on yes. because milanesa so so explain like for people who don't know like milanesa empanizada what that means because like a milanesa like bread, is meat, uh, but then, a steak. Uh -huh. it's like breaded which means that it also has like flour and egg and like you know yes, it is. so like maybe that's all that that's what i was thinking too okay well yeah, that's yeah. what i'm gonna <laughs> you know what i've had it with this I'm gonna I'm gonna DM every Officially? single queen. Yes, I'm gonna DM every single queen on this season and ask them. <laughs> you know, to do it. I was about reference. to. I was yes. a, there are varying results to this mini challenge. Um, and when Rahina sees Lady Kero's results, we get another Milanesa from from Rahina. And so, um, at the end of the challenge, I think Rahina does have the best sort of look i mean you i mean who's to like, say because they're the all kind weird, of whatever. the weird thing is that they had to they had to match valentina's mask which is what i found yeah. weird because for me matracas well, like, looked the best but it looked nothing like the mask so yeah. you know yeah yeah uh well e but even matraca is like i look like some like uh, someone from an african tribe from who knows where <laughs> like Okay. I mean, it looked amazing. But it Regina, just didn't look anything like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So Regina does end up winning, um, and she wins some money. Um, but that also takes us to another thing you want to mention. Yeah, so when, when they are hurrying up, because they only had three minutes to finish, and they are in, like, the last minute, Valentina kind of, like, uh, you know, tells them to hurry by saying, like, oh, apúrense, ahí viene el chacal. So uh, chacal... I I have had to translate it a couple of times in my life in subtitles, uh, especially in my movies, which is crazy. Um, but basically, I always translate chacal as rough trade, you know, because it's like literally okay. trade, you know, that's that's chacal trade. Uh, so basically, it's a, anyone who's like very masculine, probably straight or like straight, but willing to like bend the rules a little bit, you know, for money or for whatever. And uh, and so that 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 you know gays go after because he's like very manly and whatever. 
But in Mexico, Chacal specifically, oh, by the way, that that just means literally jackal, you know? And um, yeah. so in Mexico, it has a racial uh, connotation because usually, not usually, you know, generally, uh, Chacal is somebody that is very dark skinned, you know, that it's like a, a brown man that is very masculine, that is often, uh, you know, poor or that has like a very, a uh, stereotypically poor or low class job, you know, like a like a you know job that you have to do with your hands, you know, like a construction yeah. or something like that. And so, anyone who looks like that, anyone who looks, you know, who has dark skin or who or who you know who looks very rough or like whatever, they will call uh, you know gays will call them chacal. And the thing is, like, it could be something that is very sexual and very like like yes you know like i like you know my men to be chacales or something like that but it could also be used in a very derogative way and it could also be being used um it could also be used in a in a very fetishizing way you know and that's a conversation that has been that's that has been had lately you know in the in the past few years about basically retiring the term because we are either uh, being very pejorative, uh, you know, towards, uh, you know, uh, gay people or, or even men in general uh, from lower classes, or uh, we are fetishizing, you know, gay men or men um, who who are brown and who are like, you know, basically the, the only reason that you're attracted to them is because they are brown or because they look a certain way or they they remind you of certain stereotype yeah. of, of, of poverty. So it is a kind of like a controversial term because it's definitely you can use them and be you, you can use the term and be like, well, I'm not using it because of that. But like if if we are having the conversation of retiring the term, maybe it is something that we should consider because at the end of the day, it's reducing somebody to like, you know, it's basically like if trade had the connotation of of blackness, for example, you know, imagine if if every time that you call somebody trade, you are basically saying like, oh, he looks like a like a rough black man or something like that. Like it, it's yeah. kind of that connotation, so it's a that, like a fetishization. Yes, that you cannot, <clears throat> or, you can try, but the, it, it, there's no way to separate it from the racial connotations, and so. That's the the history of of chacal, you know, a term that we basically have used for many many years, decades, and uh, and maybe it's time to to let it go. So yeah. Well, thank you for explaining. <laughs> yeah. The reference. Um, that takes us to the maxi of it, though, which um, we all know by this point is Natch Game. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I think everybody, you know excited for it this is what a lot of them have been waiting for this is what we've been waiting for so it was exciting to finally get to this point what i found a little less exciting was that i was ready to be like "Ooh, who who, who are they going to talk about in the workroom like, like is anyone going to say they're going to do the same person is valentina like going to come in with lolita lolita and are they going to be like oh are you doing that first we don't get any of that they go straight to the runway where they do the snatch game there's like not another set they do it on the runway which is fine yeah which is um, how, how they do it in uh italy and france because in spain they do have another set yeah um so do you want to take us through a little bit yeah uh so basically we have uh the following characters <laughs> uh so we're not going to explain every single joke because it will take like a whole episode uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about uh, who these people are, <laughs> and uh, we're going to show you uh, very quick, uh, uh, very brief clips, just so that you, just so that you can assess <laughs> uh, how good these queens uh, did. You know, uh, so yeah. Regina, Regina did Walter Mercado, who we know from uh, All Stars that uh, uh, Alexis Mateo did. I feel that uh, Regina did it better just because I feel like the whole Walter Mercado experience is better experienced <laughs> in, in Spanish. 
So that's why yeah. I feel like the, also like Regina was very careful to, because she's an actress, was very careful to do the accent, to do the Cuban accent. Oh, he's Puerto Cuban. Rican. He's Puerto Rican. No, he's Puerto Rican. Oh, but the accent is very, it's thicker than Alexis. So I feel like Regina did the accent a little bit more. Uh, basically, uh, I feel like Regina had the impersonation to a T. It was flawless. And the jokes were great. So later, I'm going to mention it again, that... I feel like she should have been on the top, but uh, yeah. I think she did great. And I love the joke she had about like when they call on her, they're like, Walter, and she goes, Leo, like she's going to start doing the horoscopes. But then it's kind of like, oh, the way I read it was that she was also saying, Leo is like, read what I just wrote kind yeah. of thing. Like, you know, so that was yeah. great. That was so really there, good. Were, there were many puns with the, with the, with the, yeah. there were many puns with the signs. Antes que nada, reciban de mí siempre paz, mucha paz. Pero sobre todo, mucho, mucho, mucho qué? Amor, amor, mis amores. Somos la única línea seria y verdadera. Echa a un lado las tristezas y ábrete hacia un mundo lleno de amor. Uh, so then Margaret did Marta de Baile. Do you know Marta de Baile? Okay, so Marta mm -hmm. de Baile is kind of like, uh, you know, if you take, I'm trying to, 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 look for equivalents in in the u.s and so it's like you take like a kardashian or like a like a real housewife and make her into a wellness guru but like she's, oh my still, God. she's okay. still a kardashian she's still a real housewife and so she's this woman who has you know she i i bet that she thinks of herself as oprah She's no opera, but she has a magazine. She has a, a radio show. She has a blah, blah, blah. She used to have a TV show. Uh, she basically made her entire brand back in the 90s uh, about like being a mom, you know, because uh, she, basically the, she, okay. she, she became famous by giving, giving out tips for, for new moms and, and stuff like that. And, um, but also we have to, you know, talk a little bit just very quickly about the dark side of Marta Baile, <laughs> which is that she is the niece of a famous dictator from Nicaragua. <laughs> so, like, yeah. So, anyway, she's a Kardashian. Where were those jokes? Did she <laughs> did she have jokes about that? Not really. Uh, so the thing about Marta de Baile now, that, like, the viral character that we know and we share, you know, every time that she does something, is that because her first language was English and she reminds us every single time about that, she's always correcting English pronunciation, you know, from people. And it's like super annoying because she will correct things like, you know, she, she would correct like every single thing that I would say, even though like I'm able to speak, you know, fluently. She doesn't care about that. She cares about pronunciation. So there's also a really famous clip. That's something that, that Margaret tried to do at the beginning. Like it's not snatch game. It's yeah, snatch, snatch game. Yeah. Uh, because that's how literally that's what she does all the time. There's also like a famous clip of her talking to Lady Gaga, uh, interviewing her about Chromatica. 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 And I like it, the way you say it, though. Chromatica. chromatica. Can, how do you say it? Chromatica. Chromatica. It's Chromatica. Chromatica, beautiful. which sounds beautiful. And so every time, every time that Lady Gaga has a tour and doesn't come to Mexico, they share that clip as like, this is why she won't come to Mexico. <laughs> because Marta de Baile corrected the position of her own album to her face. <laughs> Anyway, oh God. so that is Marta de Baile. She's super annoying. She's she goes viral every time that she does something, you know, because she she because she has so much money, she gives out this advice, you know, to people on her social media about like how you can be more fancy, you know, in your own house by doing, you know, regular things around the house, like you know, like having some fancy china for when people come to visit or whatever. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> and so she goes viral and blah blah. Um, yeah, I feel like this was a kind of like a silky situation, T.S. Madison silky situation with, with Margaret, because it's a character that is already her. So if she had had better jokes, she would have nailed it. But because the jokes yeah. were not there, then you notice like, oh, it's just Margaret doing Margaret. Because, you know, for Margaret and, and Marta de Baile, they're both like preppy girls, you know, like doing the rich girl airhead thing and like... Like that, that was easy, but the jokes yeah. were there. Hola, mi amor, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, Marta, ¿y tú? Oye, solo te puedo hacer una corrección. Oh. Es que no se dice Snatch Game, se dice Snatch Club. Deberían de 
felicitar y de reconocer lo bien que hablo español. Porque el primer idioma que aprendí fue el inglés. ¿No? Lo mismo me pasa a mí con McDonald's. No lo puedo decir mal porque sí lo sé decir como se dice. And then Galavaro did La Llorona, which was, I feel like it was a smart yet uh, bad timing. She had a, a little bit of a bad timing with this because I bet that she had it ready, but she had no way of knowing that the wrong way for the Snatch Game episode was going to be, you know, this kind of like otherworldly kind of day of the dead thing. Yeah. And everybody else was going to do Girona. <laughs> so basically, like, it was kind of... Or, like, or, as, uh, or, or as Trixie calls it, La Llorona. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Lorena Herrera is a Mexican... No, you're thinking of La Llorona. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, is that is that I think it's a smart choice. But you can't have every joke be about you crying. Like, what about what about jokes about, like, oh, my God, thank God I don't have to deal with my kids anymore. Right. Or what about like crying about crying about my kids, whatever. But then like, then like it's apparent that you're fake crying. Like you really don't give a shit yes. about your kid. Like, That's like, wait, no, wait, that she puts you up soon. Yeah, yeah. Or like, or like, um, if anybody needs me to babysit, <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> like jokes like that, like that'd be great. Like, he had, one, funny he had one joke that I thought was genius and that everybody laughed and then nothing else, which was when they were talking about the boogeyman. You know, she was like, that's my husband. <laughs> you know, she was cheating on yeah. me. So that was that was great. I just feel like it needed somebody to to kind of like give it. I mean, you have a blank character and you had to create it from scratch. And I feel like she didn't. You know, she just had a couple of good jokes and that was it. Yeah. Um, then we have. Then we have Christian Peralta. Now, from the beginning of the episode, he goes, this is <clears throat> my challenge. And girl, it was. <laughs> Because she is it's, doing... Well, hang on. It's Christian Peralta, Transformista Oficial's Drag Race, and we're all just living in it. <laughs> exactly. Also, I haven't done any research on this, but now it's they have added a lot more things to the name. So now it's Christian Peralta, Transformista Oficial, Padre de Familia. <laughs> you know, like a family man. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I'm, we're not going to be able to keep up. Okay. But uh, Christian, you know, he's... We'll, a, we'll give you an update. We'll give you an update yes, as, as, a, as a Chiron, the episodes go by. Chiron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Christian, I mean, she's a Transformista girl. So like, it's like basically like giving a Snatch Game challenge to Chad Michaels, you know? Uh, she's it was really be, good. She like, was I, possessed, I know, I she was possessed by Veronica Castro. Yeah. So yeah, Veronica Castro good. is uh, I was I was thinking real hard like how can I how can I begin to explain Veronica Castro? Uh, she's John Collins in Dynasty. Yeah, you know? the, yeah, yeah. But yeah. imagine, That's but really, imagine if yeah. John Collins had because they also kind of look like imagine if John Collins also had like her own talk show, you know, where she uh -huh. where like, very uh, very Carrington esque kind of way that that she would talk to the to the guests and everything like that is how did how did she say how did she say show or program <laughs> it was really funny the way she said it uh, yeah. anyway to have a queen do veronica castron's latch game is like a queen doing judy garland or doing lisa or doing john rivers which is like this is what drag is about you know drag is not about doing ariana grande drag is about doing judy garland you know and so and if you're gonna do and if you're gonna do one of those characters you've got you to have to do it to right really exactly it. but it's like yeah. the bread and butter for so many queens for so many decades and so, just, so, sorry i was just saying am i correct and isn't isn't christian the drag daughter of ricky lips yes yes we mentioned it in the first episode. yeah so Yeah, right. Yes. So there we go. Like, right. Exactly. Like that tells you a lot of what you need to know. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I feel like, you know, I, I'm going to say it like the voice was there. The makeup was flawless. The wig was perfect. Oh, it was really the good. The jokes that, yeah, were incredible because she covered everything we know about her. You know, she covered like uh, the, her son. You know, her son is Christian Castro, who's a great singer, a great Mexican singer who has always been, you know, rumored to be gay, but like, you know, he has never officially come out. And so she talked about that. She gave me a little bit of Bob the Drag Queen in terms of like showboating, you know, which obviously some of the other queens might be like, girl, come down a little bit. But at the same time, I've never it's, heard drag, that, race, no, it's you... drag race, it's yes. match game. That's the name of the game, you know? 
Are you what, what do you want me to do? Come go, go there and not be as amazing as I can be? Yeah. Oh, mis vidas adoran. Y los aplausos, mis vidas, son de plata. Bienvenidos a mi programa Shashasho. Mira, mira mi Valentina, cómo te parece esta mi hermosa en mi pequeña soledad. Y mi Oscar putazo, que diga, mi Oscar madrazo. Bellotote es hermoso. Y mi Pablito Ruiz. Ay, no, perdón, mi Lolita, cómo me encantas, hermosa. Mira, ya te ando confundiendo. Y vamos a empezar. Ahora sigue como si estuviera en la sala de la casa de todos ustedes, porque el foro 11 de Televisa San Ángel se ha convertido en la casa en este momento de todos ustedes. Y hacemos como si, estamos, como si estuviéramos en la casa, nomás que en esta ocasión no soy tu mamá, soy este, soy la otra, <risa> soy la otra, <risa> la presentadora. Entonces, este... Great. Next stop we had Argenis as Gloria Trevi, again, another old school drag kind of character. You know, if you're a drag queen and you don't have a Gloria Trevi in your arsenal, it's like not having, you know, like a Britney or a Lady Gaga or... No, not even that, because I feel like... Uh, It's a little bit, um, maybe not having a chair, you know, something like that, because you have uh, to have the voice, you have to have, you know, the, the catchphrases yeah. and everything. And I'm going to say this, Argenis nailed the impersonation, like she sounded so much like her. It was wild how much she sounded like her. She just had zero jokes, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see that. It, it makes me think that maybe she does do Gloria Trev, like Gloria Trevi. Oh, in the I'm show. sure she does. But, yeah, you know, yeah. But 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 like, but like to have to come up with jokes, you know, is obviously where she she's never probably had to do that before. Yeah, yeah. Gracias, gracias. La neta, la neta, la neta, Rosa. Bien emocionada está de tu programa, güey. Se le hace. Lo que pasa es que la mera neta, no sé, o sea, cuando estaba ahorita con ustedes, pues como que me chiviaba, mano. Entre tanto, es que pura gente así bien se avionda. Entonces yo decía, no, si hablo, pues van a decir que soy bien mensa, pero... <laughs> And then we have Matraca doing Adela Micha. Do you know Adela Micha? No, I didn't okay. know who she was. So I, looked, Adela, I looked her up, though. Adela Micha is kind of like Rachel Maddow meets Janine Pirro. <laughs> And when I say Janine oh Pirro, when I say Janine Pirro, I don't mean like the conservative, you know, crazy thing, but like how... Her voice is so much of the of the newscaster character that she's doing, you know. Uh, and so she, for example, she used to be the 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 host for Big Brother when Big Brother first came to Mexico in the early 2000s. Oh. Yeah, yeah, because okay. she she had that kind of voice of like, yes, welcome to Big Brother, you know. And uh, and the thing about uh, Adela Micha when you impersonate her is that you have to do a thousand synonyms for like some of the words that she uses because that's how she used to basically fill up the the dead air when she was you know uh hosting something by saying okay. like you know like uh welcome to the show this program this emission of uh television you know uh, and uh, like i have this guest that is amazing incredible um uh, a superstar, somebody that is so important, so fascinating, <laughs> so thrilling. You know, that is how she talks. But the great thing about Matraca right. is that she had the jokes. You know what I mean? So I feel like the top placement was great. I'm still kind of like mad that Regina wasn't also in the running. Uh, but anyway. Ay, banana. Yo estoy emocionada, no nadada, prolapsada, floreada de estar aquí en tu programa. Es ¿eh? una maravilla. Ay, bravo. Y esta, como cada noche entonces, es para divertirnos de manera muy espectacular, recordando este fenómeno que fue polémico, controvertido, pero siempre sorpresivo y que hizo historia. So Lady Quero did Luna Hill. And we remember another queen doing Luna, Luna Hill because Greta White did it, uh, did her on La Masdraga, season five. Uh, so the, the latest oh, okay. La Masdraga. You know, the big books and the big books, <laughs> the big boobs and the bucket hat, remember? Hola a todos mis lunáticos, yo soy Luna Hill y vengo desde Medellín Mor. Yo te paso chiquito y juguetón, pero eso todo grande, precoz y dormilón. Ay no, eso diga más. So mm -hmm. that, that the Greta White did, I, I think she did incredible. And uh, because I don't really know uh, Luna Hill, what I know about Luna Hill is that she's kind of like Gigi Gorgeous meets uh, Trisha Paytas, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, okay. kind of like this beauty influencer who's like kind of an airhead and she has like big boobs and she's trans. 
and uh and so Greta White did great so that's that's kind of like the image that I had and I feel like Lady Carol even if you didn't know Luna Hill or you know kind of like the basics like oh she's just like a bimbo and she's Colombian uh she was really funny I just feel personally like it wasn't top placement funny when compared to Regina's Walter Mercado that is my okay. issue this episode that I feel like Regina should have been on the top uh, instead of Lady Kero. What do you think? I mean, it's tough to say because I'm very familiar with Walter Mercado, but I'm not familiar with Luna Hill at all. So, I mean, I, I, I guess I would agree with you, but yeah, I'm just not familiar with Luna Hill. Yeah. Oh, ya como estás, amor. Estoy súper emocionada de que me tengas aquí. Y en tus 100 mexicanos, ah, oh, no, ¿verdad? Mentiri. <risa> Mi amor, y es con un millonario para compartir mis coditas, porque si es con un pelagato, ahí lo digo más. Well, that's Snatch Game, and that um, brings us to la día de eliminación that Christian talks about her, their partner, and wanting to propose to her when they get home. Um, almost everybody comes up to hug Christian. Um, we get our third Milanesa Empanizada this episode right there. Um, Argenis doesn't come over. And it's interesting that they like clarify, it's not out of shade, not out of like whatever, but she says because she's emotional and she didn't want to take away from Christian's moment. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I think it's fair, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to mention this in a, in a moment, but like, um, the whole thing about wanting to, to, to do, to, to, to kind of help her mom financially, it's a very specifically Mexican thing, you know, for many of us, because, you know, Mexico, M Mexican culture, you know, Catholic culture is very mom centric, you know what I mean? And so, but also like, even, even if you have both your parents and you want to help both your parents, like, like this idea of like, I have to do good because my parents did so much for me and they are not great, you know, financially, uh, even now that whatever I do is not just for me, but for them. It's a very, mm -hmm. it's a very specifically Mexican thing. And I really feel for her because, you know, it's something that, that I think about all the time, you know, that, that like I have to pay back everything that, that they have done for me. And so it's something that we can, we can, many of us can relate to. And so, so yeah, I mean, I think that, I thought that, that uh... we talked, we talked about it in, in the first episode with the Mint the Queens. Argenis comes from Ciudad Juarez. It's not like a big, you know, it's not Mexico City. It's not Guadalajara, like, like most of the Queens. Yeah. So I feel like like the idea of a, of a drag queen from Ciudad Juarez, you know, who is probably like a like a like a queen who performs in very small bars, who does Gloria Trevi, you know, uh, two or three times a week, and that's you know her income, and to come to Drag Race, it's a it's a big deal, you know. And like we said on on the last lip sync, and with this one, we're gonna say it as well. Like she's gonna have a great career from now on simply performing you know for 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 everybody across uh, across the country because she's a great performer she's a great lip syncer so i fell for her but at the same time i was like oh she's gonna do great you know no matter what happens this episode that's why that's why i found like i have moments with christian right like sometimes i'm like oh girl you're so into yourself and then other times where it's like no that's very much uh warranted considering how incredible you are like you know like so back and forth, but I think that's what makes what Christian tells her um, really, I don't know, like, I guess um, it had a lot of meaning for me. She basically says, like, look, if you have to lip sync this episode, and it, it seemed, for me, it felt different than when other queens say this, but she basically told her, like, you give it your all. You put everything out there on the floor, you, you, you know, because it felt like the message behind that was sort of what you were saying is, like, Christian understands that this platform is life-changing. And so for our head, our Hanis, if that's what she wants is to like get out of her, help her mom get out of poverty. Well, showing the world, cause this isn't just people in Mexico watching it, obviously, but showing the world what you can do and how you can perform is going to be, you know, very, very um, wonderful for your career. So she's telling her, you know, don't, don't take it or, 
don't take this moment lightly. Like take advantage of every second that you are on that runway. So that was like really, that was really great. I know that drag race is very emotionally and mentally vexing, you know? Uh, but I feel like queens often forget that a drag race season is basically an audition for World of Wonder, an audition for filmmakers, an audition for promoters, an audition for uh, bar owners and club owners. Like it's an audition for for the audience to be like, oh, when this queen is in town, I don't care if she placed seventh or fourth or fifth, I don't care. If this queen is in town, I'm going to go see her because what I saw on TV excites me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so every yeah. time that a queen gives up on a lip sync, you know, like she goes like, oh, I don't want a lip sync or whatever. It's like, okay, fine. You're going home. You know that. You know, in, inside of you, you're like 100% sure that you're going home. Now, leave with an incredible lip sync because that's what's going to assure, you know, to, to kind of like, uh, yeah, like give you some, you know, a job for like the rest of your life. The fact that you didn't go out giving up, you know? If if I were like a, somebody booking queens at a club or whatever, you know, uh, and I saw a queen on Drag Race who like sort of gave up or like left the, li walked out of the lip sync or whatever, you don't know that person, but unfortunately you have nothing else to go off of. Like I'm, yeah. I would be like, well, is this queen, is this queen going to like walk out of this job? Like, I don't know. Yeah. And so, you know, to, well, to like we have, somebody we have had so many queens go home in a lip sync that is like, oh my God, is that going to be a double chante? Because they are, they are both so incredible. That's how you yeah. want to go out, you know? Yeah. I, I would book Alyssa and Tatiana any day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, that takes us to the main stage. And whenever we go to the main stage, it starts with Lolita and Valentina coming out on the runway. I think Lolita looks incredible. I think she looks so good. Um, that, I, like you said, it's sort of a callback to what she was wearing earlier um, in this yellow. Valentina, I think this look is great. Um, it, what it's giving me is the original Hairspray John Waters movie. That's with, what I was thinking. Uh, with Ricky Lake. Um, Tracy Turnblad's look at the end when she's doing the dance called The Bug, because it's pink and black, and then there's like ants and bugs on it. And that's what, I don't know if this is a nod to that. I don't know, but that's sort of what it reminded me of. Um, for this episode, our guest judge is Mauricio Martinez. Um, do you want to say anything? Yes. So this is what we're going to say. So Mauricio Martinez came out of the first season of Operación Triunfo, that is a, a singing competition like American Idol around the same time, early 2000s. And, and then he became an actor. He does musicals. He has been on a couple of Broadway shows. And he is uh, out. He's gay. And that's it. Okay. That's all we're going to say. Well, I have a question. Please ask away. <laughs> and someone's going to read me. I don't care. Oh, um, th this is th this is I would say fifty percent of yours and my conversations online <laughs> is me going. So Chucho, um, if we say superhéroe for superhero, then why do we say sobrenatural for supernatural? <laughs> why don't we say supernatural? I bet there's a great explanation for that i don't have it i know that that is the way that it works i know for example that we say we say sobreviviente sobrevivir for survive uh we don't say so we don't super, say we don't so, say superviviente um, we don't say sobre héroe i know i know i know i i don't know why why that is i'm i'm, I'm curious if you if you know um all right let's look at this again, i don't care <laughs> let's do it yeah, all right. First off, it's Argenis, and Argenis's kind of like creature of the night was El Charro Negro. Uh, and so it's basically like, you know, like kind of like a headless horseman, but it's a charro. <laughs> and I'm not sure that it, he's headless. I'm sure that he has his head. Uh, I think this is incredible. I think that this is what we, we talked about, you know, a couple of times before about doing a, a something that is, you know, very specific, but dragging it up you know like not just wearing a charro costume but like trying to to make it as draggy as possible i love the makeup and i love the hair so yeah i love everything about this i also it from this picture we kind of can't see this 
but um, below the dress yes. is like pants that then yes. flare out like yes. the dress and those are awesome too yeah, yeah, so yeah. i think this is like you said the makeup is great all the gold details are really cool um i liked her explanation of el charro negro because i didn't know much about it um but that's a cool i think character to to do for this challenge so yeah i thought it was amazing yeah uh next up we have uh christian peralta and we have actually two pictures. We have one before the uh, reveal and after the reveal. I am obsessed with this look. It is incredible. And it gives me something that not many queens do on a uh, drag race. And it's something that uh, people in La Mas Draga uh, demand the queens to do because La Mas Draga is not just like, oh, don't just walk down the roadway. Give us a whole performance you know what i mean like it's yeah. not like oh i just want to see the look no i don't care about the look like he was you know something to look at and christian didn't just walk out there and, and did a, a reveal like she did a whole thing i i am obsessed with this look i am obsessed with this makeup i am obsessed with this performance and i am obsessed with christian this episode so yeah um i think it's okay oh <laughs> how very dare you <laughs> the the thing I don't, I think the thing that there's like a, a disconnect for me okay. is that the, the makeup and the hair, it's very cool. It's spooky. It's like giving you, it's giving you La Llorona, right? It's giving you La, La Llorona. And like, that's what I would think of like, oh, I saw, I'd see that and be like, oh my God. But then the dress, it's like, it, to me, it's too like, it's too fashion-y. Really? But like the, the design, the design on it and the, but but I don't picture La Llorona wearing that. Like, but if you look at the pattern on the dress, it's literally she's coming out from from the underworld, from like the dark, from the black, and she's like, yeah, it's it's. Come I on. guess. I mean, I oh think it's god. good, but but it's not my favorite. Oh my god! <laughs> so anyway, I I just love it. I when they were like not you know, falling head over heels over it. I was kind of surprised. And I was trying to look for something that could be improved. And maybe, you know, the ribcage could have been, you know, shoe shopped a little yeah, bit. I mean, it's, it, let me be clear. It's incredible, but it's like, there's there's ones that I liked better, I think. I mean, yeah, but like, okay, well, let's continue. <laughs> Next up Moving is on. Galavaro. And Galavaro did kind of like a, you know, El Diablo, you know, just the devil. And uh, and she, I mean, it's okay. She re, she used also the thing, the windshield thing again. <laughs> she she bought, she had a surplus of that after the last. She got, she, and she, she, was like, she I got to two, use this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a there was a two for one deal at the craft store, <laughs> at the at the tire store, <laughs> the cup depot. Um, uh, like you said, I think it's okay. It's it's if I saw it in real life, I'd be like, oh, it's so cool. But like. I I don't see this and go oh devil like it doesn't read to me as a specific kind of supernatural care but it's but it's fine yeah I mean the 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 kind of like what it's giving it's giving me like uh, Valentina said it's very Sasha Valor it's giving me like this is like this is Voldemort's gay sister <laughs> right like gay gay drag queen brother <laughs> the boy who lays comes to die <laughs> yeah anyway. Next up is Lady Kero. This is Night of a Thousand Lloronas. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and I liked it, but I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be like, this is episode, you know, six, seven. And uh, and the queens that are left are like incredible. So it's not I as think, heightened or polished exactly. as I think some of the other yeah. queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad, but it's not like yes, elevated. Exactly. exactly. Uh, next up is Margaret, and we have also like a picture uh, before the reveal and after the reveal. She was an awal. So real quick, an awal is just a shapeshifter, you know, in, in Mexican culture. And uh, they, they're either humans or witches or, we, uh, you know, like uh, brujos that can transform into animals or into other humans. And, uh, and so it's kind of like a shapeshifter chupacabra, something like that. And uh, and it's uh, it's very common to be like everybody has a story of somebody that saw an awal once, you know, in the woods or in a ranch or something like that. 
And uh, she, so she did the Nawal and then the woman that the Nawal transforms into. And I liked it. I, I, I really love the before the review because it's not just like, oh, I'm going to put something on, on top. But like, you know, it has kind of like a where the wild things are vibe to it. The post, you know, like after the review is just kind of like a cute outfit and that's it. I would have preferred if instead of giving us a reveal, you gave us like a hot, furry, you know, kind of like a slutty thing, you know? I would even be okay with like the cute uh, outfit if there was some sort of animal, like she could have worn animal ears and a tail or, you know, like whatever. Um, like an wild meat transformation. Like, yeah. Yes, exactly. That would have been really cool. Um, there's a Marvel character that Eva, the character I created, she has a crush on in this story that I wrote for for her in Marvel Voices Comunidades. And do you know what his, uh, his name is Herman. Do you know what his um, code name is? Nawal. Because mm -hmm. he, cool. he can summon animal spirit. Nice. <laughs> uh-huh. Anyway. All right. So next up, we have Matraca. This is, this is Drag Race, her story, girl right here right now like this is this is it this is incredible from head to toe i love it <gasps> oh my god terry say something i don't like this i love it <laughs> oh shut up <laughs> don't do that to me i just i just simon cowled you <laughs> yeah, yeah. um this is my favorite thing i've seen so far on drag race mexico yeah, yeah. Uh, so here's here's the thing what I'm going to say here might sound kind of weird. I think I can understand why someone who has no idea about Mexican culture might see this and be like, what? I don't get it. It's an animal. It's crafty. What? Like, I can see why they would maybe not get it. Or somebody right? who only has Coco as a reference. Yes. Being familiar. So look at the the like weird like chicken feet that are over the bottom of the dress, right? There's details here. Like she talked, Matraca talked about how like originally Alebrijes, they had like weird horns and like these crazy teeth and things that, you know, like um, they were just like these weird hybrids of things and they had animal pieces and they weren't just like, they weren't just like a, a cat with wings and horns. They were like monsters, right? And so there, this is very well considered and thought out. I love it. I love everything from the wig to the face makeup to the, it's just, it's really cool. I love this so much. If I, if I, if I had just a single thing to say about it, you know, constructively would be that I don't, I'm not obsessed with just the face here that I would have loved. Uh, if maybe she had done it like uh, Serena with the golden mask that is a started here and then go down here, or if it was more of a bodice and had like the details of the face instead of just a face, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, the only thing, like, I mean, give me a break. We're like getting yeah. nitty gritty here. But like the only thing that I wish had been slightly different is um, the per this purple thing feels a little well, like the least thing that's considered. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe some mark, some pattern on here or whatever. Like that could have been really cool. Or like you said, raising the face up a bit. Like, who knows? But that's that's very minimal. This is definitely going to be, um, when I have the time, a standee. <laughs> I'm making this. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. Next up, we have Regina Boche. And Regina Boche. What was Regina Boche? I cannot remember. Uh, Do you want me to tell you? Yes. She was Regina Boche, the queen of Los Muertos. Is literally what she said. Okay. Yeah. I so I think this is a mess. <laughs> I'll be honest, the makeup is flawless. The makeup yeah. is stunning. It's incredible, but n there's not a single part of this outfit that goes with the, the other part. Like the bottom of the dress has nothing I to do with I love when the they do this the this kind of cagey things. I love it when they do that, but it has no place here. Yeah, but there's like beads and feathers and yeah. like leaves and like see through and then it, 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 it's all over the place to me. I sorry, sorry to this woman. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, do you think that's what kept her out of the top? I don't know. Because they would get us um, wasn't that great either. But at least it made a little yeah. bit more sense. Um, all right. Well, then my question for you is, out of all the runway looks, yes. who is your cheetah of the week? So I have a cheetah and a chingona. So do I. So my cheetah of the week is Christian. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. And my chingona of the week is Matraca. Yes. All right. So what about you? Okay. Do you have a cheetah? My cheetah of the week is Argenis. I think every single part of this look is um relates to the, to another part the makeup is great the whole outfit like and when there's reveals for it those are great too like i thought this was really really cool and if i went on drag race and showed this i would be very proud of myself i think it's great but my chingona <laughs> okay do you want to say do you want to say it with me yes one two ma ma <laughs> ma <laughs> Mama, 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 tra, 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 tra. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. She gets, she gets my like. Um, she's um like like Marsha, 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 chingona, chingona, chingona. That's what she gets from me this week. Yes. All right. Sure, Juan. <laughs> uh, sure, Juan. <laughs> okay, and do you have um, a churpia? Oh God, I'm between two. <sighs> So I'm just gonna, you know what? One was crazy and made no sense. The other one was underwhelming, but the one who actually excited me- I know exactly the, what you're talking about. But the one who actually excited me the least, Galabaro is my chirpy of the week. Really? Yes, Regina was a mess and oh, didn't wow. make any sense, but you know, uh, and, so and this, this, Lady this, Kero didn't excite me, but Gala, I, I, it was just I didn't like it. So this is what I I have two. I'm going back and forth between as well. But my thought is that Regina is kind of all over the place, right? But I do think that her materials and the way she did it is more polished exactly. than Lady Kero's. So I don't know whether or not to give my churpia to Lady Quero or just, Regina. Just Bocha. go for it. <laughs> Choose one. One, two, three, go. Lady Quero. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, Regina didn't get one churpia this week. <laughs> Good for her. You, you skated by, girl. <laughs> yes. Well, we then go into the critiques and the thoughts on the snatch game that the judges have. <clears throat> um. Valentina makes up a few words, interactuacion or something like that. So, uh, Valentina, it's, uh, and they tell her like the right word. Um, but this introduces us to Valentinol, which is a language that I didn't know I speak. <laughs> Fluently, <laughs> yes. So, so she, she's trilingual. Um, but I think that's really funny. And I like that, I like that she was like, oh, I'm just, I'm making stuff up again. You know, like whatever. It's kind of funny. Yeah, um, I was, I, I was going to say that. Um... That it's it's so com like girl even in Spanish Spanish speakers we make up words all the time. Um, the winner of this week's Maxi Reto, the winner of Snatch Game, is, who cares? Is actually Cristian Peralta, Transformista Oficial Padre Familia, her yeah. third win. Yes. So she's living. Yeah. Um, I, I, something when whenever this happens on Drag Race, I'm always like kind of annoyed. But essentially, what they do when they're like calling the winner is they say, um, Matraca, you absolutely slayed everyone this week. You chewed them up. You left no crumbs. You spit out their bones. Your outfit will forever be remembered as the best thing we've ever seen on Drag Race. You scalped everybody, took their wigs off. Christian, you're the winner. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> This week's lip sync, it, well, excuse me, this week's lip sync iconico was between Argenis, otra vez, 
and por primera vez, Galavaro, to the song Abranse Perras by Gloria, 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 by Gloria Trevi. Yes. So, what do you have to say about this song? So, uh, I I have some thoughts. So, so, first of all, finally, we get a Gloria Trevi lip sync in, in Drag Race Mexico. Our first Gloria Trevi lip sync in the Drag Race franchise. What the freaking España for some reason? Mm -hmm. Come on, girl. But anyway, we finally got one in Mexico. Uh, we got one. So, the two songs that we have had from Gloria Trevi and Drag Race, España and Mexico, have been from the modern era of Gloria Trevi. For those of you who don't know, Gloria Trevi was in jail for <laughs> a while uh, in the late 90s uh, because of a scandal that we are not going to get into because it's very complicated, but let's just say that it involved... Human trafficking? Human trafficking. Thank you. I forgot the word human. Uh, let's just say it involved, <laughs> don't laugh, it is serious. <laughs> let's just say it involved uh, human trafficking. And, um, but, you know, you might think that she's innocent, that it was all, uh, you know, uh, she she was a victim like the rest of the girls, which that is what I kind of believe. It's, it's complicated. Um, but the point is that she's free now and she has had a wonderful career. She got a wonderful career, a career before, the 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 the, the pre before prison the problem was that she was you know being manipulated by her manager and by the people by the person who who wrote uh most of her songs and who mm -hmm. had you know the uh, you know kind of the the power over her and uh and over all of these other girls <laughs> um but then she had a she has had a, a wonderful career after that now without him obviously uh the thing is that i feel like this guy Sergio Andrade is still getting royalties from her songs from that era because he either wrote them or produced them. So I feel like the reason why there have been no drag race songs like the classic Gloria Trevi songs has oh, been okay. because she doesn't want to give him even more royalties. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't know if that's the case. If that is the case, then whatever. She has some extra, ama amazing songs nowadays. Uh, obviously, I'm going to miss the classics. You know, I'm going to miss not having uh, Dr. Psiquiatra or, or, or Pelo Suelto in a, in a lip sync in, on Drag Race. But if that's the case, then good for her. So Abranse Perras is a very recent song, but it's a very, it's a cool song. Some people were online like, oh my God, it's her war song. It's, it is not. She has war songs. <laughs> um, it's a very faggy song because it's one of those songs that artists do specifically specifically for their gay fans you know mm. um a couple of episodes ago we mentioned uh but i cut it from the episode but i'm so i'm gonna mention it again and i'm gonna cut it again <laughs> uh we mentioned lorena herrera and how she has a song that goes like tacon punta tacon punta tacon and it's basically about like you know walking in heels and being all fierce and whatever yeah uh, and in this case, I haven't really paid attention to the lyrics of Abraham Seperras. Abraham Seperras has a, a, a reading classic in the lyrics. So here in Mexico, like we mentioned, it's not reading, it's buffing. Okay. So there's a, a whole ass poem, limerick kind of thing for buffar, you know, for reading, that, uh, that you know, times have changed. Gays don't know it by heart anymore. But back in the day, gays used to know it front to back, sideways, backwards. Like it was just something that was in your DNA the moment that you came out in Mexico. And uh, so I looked it up and uh, I found the more recent version that kind of went viral a couple of years ago and the classic version that I knew back in high school. And I kind of mixed both of them <laughs> and I brought you a buffet classic that is some of this is part of the lyrics of Abra Perras, but I'm going to read the entire thing. And uh, you didn't know that I was going to do this, but I'm going to do it. So anyway, here it goes. So this, when you are about to face your mortal enemy in a, in a fag off, you know? <laughs> uh, so anyway, 
Tú que me ves, que me miras, que me posas, estúpida babosa, porque yo, cuerpazo, rostrazo, pelazo, piernaza, cara bonita y boca chiquita. Y tú, pobrecita, ¿por qué? Porque soy. ¿Por qué? Porque tengo. Porque las reinas como yo usamos corona, las princesas diademas y las perros como tú usan cadena. ¿Qué digo diadema? Listones, ¿qué digo listones? Cordones, ¿qué digo cordones? Bolitas, ¿qué digo bolitas? Ligas, ¿qué digo ligas, hija de la chingada, si la última te la rompieron anoche? Pero acuérdate muy bien de mi cara, de mi cuerpo, de mi rostro y de mi voz, porque nunca en toda tu perra vida te vas a olvidar de mí. Un un beso y que me disculpen las de atrás si mi trenza les molesta. Well, okay, you just destroyed whoever you were talking yes. to. Yes, <laughs> so it's basically like, uh, you know, like the, the those Paris is burning reads of like, uh, you know, like touch this skin, honey, touch all of this skin, but it's like a yeah, whole, a whole last paragraph. So yeah, uh, I love it. I was obsessed with that read on on, on in high school, and uh, and so I was rewatching the lip sync for the nth time. I rewatched it so many times, and uh, and I was noticing like, oh my god, like it's saying like. A, a couple of those things, like, uh, especially like, que me disculpen las detrás si mi chongo les molesta, which is, my mom loves that phrase, because it's basically like, I'm sorry for those in the back, if my braid bothers them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so, great. Anyway, yeah. Um, Gala has an insane wig reveal, where she rips off her bald cap, and a, and like, moves her head and this like blonde short wig comes out, which is funny considering that one of the judges, I think it's, he who should not be named, uh, mentions that she looks like um, Gatubela, like a yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman with like the, cause it's like black uh, vinyl. leather kind of whatever, mm -hmm. red vinyl, um, which is funny because then with like ripping the thing off and then the blonde kind of hair. Michelle like Pfeiffer hair. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer yeah. hair. Um, I mean, it could have been curlier, but whatever. Um, So it was it was interesting though because when she rips the cap off, you can see like where it was and the make where the makeup ends because she obviously had to paint over that, so that was kind of crazy. But um, so after the lip what sync, I, what I have to say is that about this lip sync is that it is incredible. It is obviously the best lip sync we had so far, and uh, and I rewatch it many times because I just think it's a it's a very for this song in particular. It's also crazy that it is a very emotional. A lip sync but but the thing that i was gonna that i wanted to say is that it's it's it i think it's a situation where it is a little bit unfair to argenis to lip sync with this makeup which is something that i it reminds me of trinity k bonnet against adore when they uh lip sync and adore you know just takes off her mask and she has like a regular makeup but trinity is in like full birth makeup and so yeah i feel like trinity with regular makeup wouldn't have lost that lip sync and Argenis with regular makeup wouldn't have lost that lip sync because at the end of the day they are great lip syncers not only because of the tricks and and, and stuff they do but because of the, the the face that they're giving yeah and i think that's why when gala stays and Argenis is asked to sashay away lolita gets emotional telling her that she's been eliminated um and then Argenis addresses everybody and you know talks about Tila Juarez and how she hopes everybody's proud of her and like Lolita's like like you know she like almost can't keep it in um so it was really sad but hey it's a competition right do you have a front runner do you think anyone's in the front run obviously I think Christian with three wins is in the front is the front runner right now you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna give it one more week because whoever whoever wins next episode That is an acting challenge we're going to see in a moment. Uh, that's going to change some things because it's either going to be, oh, okay, Christian is definitely going to win because, you know, she's going to be on the top again or she's going to do great again, blah, blah, blah. Or she's going to fumble. Or, mm -hmm. or Regina is going to come back up or she's definitely not, like, nothing's going to happen with her because, like, they're going to jam her. Or you know, something else might happen, you know? We don't know, maybe Matraca is going to do terrible in an acting challenge, we don't know. So, so I feel like next week is going to be like the decisive week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I guess we'll find out. Should we do some art? Art, 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 art. Yes. Did somebody mention art? All right. Well, let's do this. 
for our art moment this week, we've got some pretty fun stuff. We have somebody named Shimat618, and they drew Regina and Matraka in their like girl group looks, and it's really cute. Um, we also have, returning to the main stage, <laughs> Muerta Mosca, who just really comes through every week, right? Uh, they 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 bring it to you every every ball. season <laughs> every ball. Um, Muerta Mosca drew uh, drew Galavaro and Argenis. Yes. Um, we also have another returner, Chuco Cho, Chucho Chocolatine, and they drew Margaret. Um, somebody named Hard Feelings also drew Margaret, and someone named Lunatic Art O Eight also drew Margaret. And last but not least is Brandon Michel, who drew Matraca in her um, Flores de Mexico look. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's your that's your art for the week. So, yeah, definitely follow them, share their work, show them some love. But next week on Drag Race Mexico, the queens will portray telenovela villains i can't wait yes it's gonna be great um and the judges panel will be joined by alan estrada did you want to say something yes i mean we're going to talk about him <laughs> next week uh but i wanted to to mention that i just it just hit me when we were talking about the you know before we started shooting uh shooting before we started recording um that we every single male presenting judge that we have that we have had on the show so far has been queer so you know actually in fact terry i'm talking about only the male presenting ones but like dana paula is bi and alejandra Bogo is trans who else mm -hmm. we have had and that a uh, christian christian vasquez Rockstar, Dana Paola, Alejandra Bogue, He Who Must Not Be Named, and Alan Estrada. Every single judge we have had mm -hmm. has been part of the LGBT community. So far. So I hope they keep doing that, but we'll see. Yeah. That is incredible. Before... Um, yeah, before we end this episode, there's one thing I want to say but that I noticed about the preview for next week's episode. Is it Os is it Oscar Madrazo? Is that his name? Oscar Putas. He has a yeah. He has a moment where he says to someone on the main stage, "So we're never going to see another makeup face from you, are we?" Right now, I just want to point out that in this episode, on the main stage, they literally tell Margaret, "You've painted your face different. It looks great." And she goes, goes, finally, so that, finally you noticed. <laughs> so, so if he says that to Margaret, I'm going to rage. Yeah. Anyway. Chucho. Yes. Tell people where to find you. <laughs> so you can find me on uh, Instagram and uh, Letterbox as Chucho underscore QMP and on Twitter as Chucho underscore Q. Sorry, on X. <laughs> you can find me on X. <laughs> I ain't calling. I ain't calling it X. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram. Blue Sky Threads and TikTok, despite the fact that Chucho only ever puts up my Twitter and Instagram icons. Can I and... say something? Can I say something about that? <laughs> that is a whole PNG file that I just overlay on top of the of the video. And I haven't had the time, the energy, or the will to redo it with Redo. all of your socials <laughs> so i'm sorry but i can't and i shan't <laughs> i don't i don't care okay. um but you can find me at terryblast.com i just i just want i just wanted her to come <laughs> oh so i'll give you my jesus heart yeah, yeah. as always thank you for joining us until next time and as always Respeta tu cultura, maricón. Her hair waving in the her hair waving in the breeze. <laughs> <laughs>